hide. This video is going to be about creating a moat to defend your village, your castle, just anything you want to keep the bad guys away from. You can see down below the moat we have runs all the way around the village and our castle. This is our bedroom from in between, in the middle of that big building. Village from a different angle, the spawner up above. This is a series of drop shafts and soul sand bubble column elevators. Since the real goal is protecting yourself against pillagers and raids, I always use iron doors and uh, we do use a polished dorite slab. You can use whatever you want or just leave that feature off. See many things get trapped in the moat. And you notice the, the key to the moat is that not all of the blocks of water are source blocks. So you have water running in towards the center from both sides. All of the walls are at least three blocks thick. I think I made the walls here four blocks thick so that you can have stairways up in the middle so that you can walk the wall to, for defense. Don't mind a little bit of jerkiness here. Not the smoothest running computer these days. Yep, there's a, a chicken and a rabbit, both stuck. That's four blocks wide and two blocks deep. And here you can see where we've got a couple of source blocks in the middle of this mix. And it still works fine just this way, but if you want to fix it, you just put a couple of blocks, chop them out, and all of a sudden you got flow again. So we don't want those areas to be source blocks. We want them to be flowy so it traps critters. And in here you can see on all sides the uh, castle wall has a mechanism for getting up top. Really if you set up a three to four block wide wall, you're going to be defending against most stuff. But the moat just makes it so ridiculously easy to defend against raids and pillager attacks. I don't even worry about pillagers in general, because they will run up to the castle, get stuck in the moat every time, and just, I just shoot them from above. Okay, so you get about four pails of water, and this is a trick, it's not my trick, but you open up four chunks, four blocks out of the ground, you put one bucket of water at one end, one bucket of water at the other end, and one in the center, and then you have created a source for refilling your bucket. You'll probably make a few of these if you do a very large moat. See, there I messed it up, because I took from the wrong end, so it's flowing. Now the moat is four blocks wide by two blocks deep, and you know, I'm not sure if you make it deeper 
if that's going to change the dynamic, but this is worked so perfectly that I would just say four blocks wide, two blocks deep. It'll hang up every once in a while. More the recording software that <laughs> failed. You can build whatever you want on the other side of the moat. That's going to be completely up to you, but I tend to use the double-doored iron doors. got to be on the right side to get the doors oriented. Putting the buttons on to open. And the mistake that I made in this build, don't do it. <laughs> don't add those slabs before you put the water in. You can kind of see on either side where you need to put another bucket. Right where those divots are. I learned the hard way, and you'll see here, if those uh, slabs are in place when you're trying to complete the moat, then you don't get the full flow to interfere with it. Oh, I screwed it up again. Always in the center. See, there's a there's one section of it completed perfectly there. And I couldn't figure out at the time what was screwing things up. And it was the fact that I had the slabs placed before I put the water in place. Okay, there you can see I stopped, removed the slabs, and now I'm going to add the water where I should have added it in the first place. Boom. go. You can see how everything gets sucked down or to the center. And when a, when a pillager or a ravager, well, I don't think the ravagers have even tried to get in it. But if you trigger a raid, everything gets stuck or can't cross that moat. It's a little tricky to run and jump and land on the platform, but I, it's doable. And the level of safety that it provides is just worth it. Now we just have to trigger a raid to test it. We've already tested it. We triggered a raid and it was like nothing. Both, both well actually there were a few runs, uh, but they all got stuck in the moat on the first run. That's why we were surprised when, but I changed this part here. So I think it changed how they approached a little speed up because the, it's really funny because this is a pillager outpost. And the last time that we were here, I removed everything except for a few blocks of stairs. Hmm. 
there was a broken portal right beside the pillager outpost, so we built it up and built a little stopping point. There they are. That's all that I left them. Oh, they tried to stop me. But I took down the last bit of it. Every last stone that was the villager pillager outpost is gone now. <laughs> they almost caught up to me. You can see him come up to the door. Oops. And here is the guy with the sign that's going to vex me. And There we go. Now it's just a matter of running back to the town and trigger in a raid. And there she starts. It was very strange because the, the raid this time started much like the last one did. But it very soon changed. They all showed up on this one side, and just like they always do, and this is a raid, you can see it's been triggered, and they're all just stuck in the moat. So it's just nothing to stand up above and shoot them. And that was all it took for the first raid that we triggered was just standing up here and killing them. But I don't know what changed, but a whole bunch of them spawned on the top of our castle. You can see them here in these still images. The computer just stopped recording, so. But we did manage to put them down, and it was because of the moat. You can see there's a Ravager that couldn't get across. This system works. We won.